I've been immersed in themes of water in my recent artworks. In this age of the Anthropocene, in which we have irreversibly altered the natural patterns of the earth, how can we respect the necessity of water? How can we make the necessary sacrifices to preserve the life it created and the possibility for future life? In my Lake Mandala series, how can I respond to the lakescape by further activating its textures and forms with color and pattern? How can I create mandalas and drishtis or areas of focus on its changing surface and bring attention to its sacred nature? Cyanotype offers me the chance to really get into the color blue. I've been thinking about how to use gestures in these cyanotypes that communicate states of being, such as freedom, protection, or dreaming. In my Ophelia Rising series, I wanted to interpolate contemporary women, including myself and three collaborators, to reverse the tragic role from Shakespeare's Hamlet. We took refuge in a flower-filled bath to rise out of our despair with self-affirmation and power. The three women who collaborated with me were Nicole Pollard, Sydney Williamson, and Naima Morella. We thought about water as a kind of womb-like space, and I was also influenced by the Jewish ritual of the mikvah bath. I used color in this series to express different emotional states. And part of the reason also that I spend a lot of time in the bathtub is because I was very depressed during the last administration. And so the bathtub was a space of sanctuary and healing as well as reflection. Pre-Raphaelite painter Sir John Everett Millay represents Ophelia as a pale teenager, her lips parted as if taking her last breath and hands cupped in a Christ-like gesture. Elizabeth Siddell, the model for this painting, was an artist in her own right, and after months of posing in Millay's bathtub, she ultimately caught a chill that led to pneumonia, and treating the pneumonia with laudanum led to her untimely death. Symbolist artist Odalyn Radon represents Ophelia in a more abstract composition in his characteristic cobalt blue pastel. For the Ophelia Buoyant video, I spent time in the Atlantic Ocean in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and I videotaped myself, my mother, and my mother-in-law thinking about the character of Ophelia as a multi-generational symbol a woman who rises out of despair and finds her own strength and determination throughout the generations. I also wanted to deal with the history of Franklin Pierce Lake named after the 14th president of the United States, who opposed abolition. And I was thinking about how can I exercise this racist history from the place where I'm living? When I could more fully grasp the toll of the COVID pandemic in March of 2021, I decided to create a fire and ice mandala to honor those dead and also the first responders. To make the symbols for the patterns of these mandalas, I cut out shapes such as Adinkra symbols of the Akan people of Ghana. I worked with Ripley, a fire dancer and farmer and performer who celebrated the mandala with dancing on the lake. Ten days later, on the spring equinox, I collaborated with yogi Stephen Bethel to make a mandala on his pond at Bethel Farm. And we had a ceremony that lasted from noon until dusk. Later that evening, Amy Borsch danced with her hula hoop with Ripley, and they lit up the mandala with colorful light into the night. In 2022, I decided to make the now mandala on Franklin Pierce Lake. We're gonna be
be doing a project today called the Now Mandala. Um, here's my collaborator, Johnny Bolster, to tell you a little bit more about this amazing apparatus. Yeah, hi, I'm Johnny Bolster. This is the O-Tractor, as I lovingly call it. Uh, it basically is a giant uh, rotating airbrush. Uh, we're going to have a generator producing power for a compressor, which then feeds um, the airline that goes through a hopper filled with ash that's then blown into these outputs here and we can regulate which one it goes into to, to determine what size circle we want. So we'll make a series of three concentric rings that Sophie will uh, add her artistic license to, to, to create amazing things. As in the earlier fire and ice mandalas, I used a dinkra symbol and other kinds of symbol stencils made out of cardboard and colored sand. One of the most well-known Adinkra symbols is called Gyanyame, and it's a symbol that represents the supremacy of God, or except for God, these things would not have been done. Some of the other symbols that you see are a little bit more universal, such as a spiral, a snake, and a Kedusha symbol as we have in medicine. All of these symbols I used in repetition or in alternation to create a feeling of rhythm. And I also used colors hot and cool to represent fire and ice and the elements that bring life to bear. In the spirit of improvisation and to seal our intentions, we danced around the mandalas, releasing mind, body, and soul, and celebrating this moment in which we were one with the lake. 